This is episode number 301 of the Middle Country Public Library podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm Sal DiVincenzo here in the studio with my fabulous colleague, Abraham Lincoln. There he is. <laughs> That's actually Jim Ward. How are you, Jim? Good. How are you? Good. So if you're, uh, if you're listening, uh, then I highly recommend that you go to our uh, YouTube channel to uh, take a look at who's here in the studio because it's Jim Ward dressed up as Abraham Lincoln. That's correct. You uh, So yesterday here at the library, you did the uh, recitation. Is that how you say it? Yep. We, uh, we did recitation. three times, uh, 10, 3, and 5, and um, it was a great it was time. fabulous. Yeah. Of the, of the Gettysburg of Address. The, of the Gettysburg Address. It's a two-minute speech, and um, we had a video for the patrons to kind of give them background very nice. on, uh, like, the Battle of Gettysburg, and then... Um, also, why Lincoln was there in Gettysburg to give the speech, and um, it was a great time. We had yes. a good amount of people, and yeah, exactly. it's always fun. It is always fun, and it's the what one hundred and six one hundred and sixtieth. Yes, one sixtieth. One sixtieth. Yep. Uh, anniversary. I did this and, ten years ago too. <laughs> yes, and you know what's funny is that uh, last year's episode this week was also a, uh, a history episode. Yep. Correct. Because obviously, if Jim's here, it only means one thing. This week in history. <laughs> it's, it's a very good thing that you do, I tell you. <laughs> okay, Jimmy, so uh, we're going to just jump right in here. Let's jump in. All right. All right. For it. So first item on the list, November 12th, 1927, Joseph Stalin takes full control of the Soviet Union. So oh that was, I guess, 10 years after the Bolshevik re revolution. Um, I don't know why. I always just it assumed was. Joseph Stalin was, uh, you know, kind of there from the beginning. But yeah, but I no. guess not. Yeah. Take a look at this picture of him here, uh, here at the table here. If you're watching on uh, YouTube, you'll see this uh, picture there of him he is. at the table. There he is. Uh, some, some quick facts, uh, Jimmy, if sure. I may. Absolutely. Uh, did you know that uh, his mother sent him to study to become a priest? That's kind of ironic. It is kind of ironic, yes. Uh, in December 1895, Stalin's mother sent him to a seminary wow. in the Georgian capital of uh, Tiflis. And uh, he rebelled against studying scripture, <laughs> however, instead, and uh, started reading the writings of Karl Marx. Wow. So that's not really much of a surprise there. And yep. uh, take a look at this nice uh, young man here. Not nice, but a nice picture of him. You would think this uh, this would be a, a, a guy who wouldn't uh, cause so much uh, heartache so. and terrible and yep. terror. Um, he looks like he could be in a boy band. I got <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. This Not so better. much, no. Uh, and he became the de facto dictator of the Soviet Union. So a couple of little... Yeah. Uh, things about that and, and he was there for quite a long time quite I think. a long time yeah. yeah and reign of terror there so that was back in 1927 1927 right. um this one i it's a little bit of a lighter topic yes um november 12th 1946 the first drive-in banking service in america so drive drive through drive through banks that's yeah that's what i'm thinking there yes. was the drive through so yes they, we're gonna put a picture up here yep. of of what it looked like. Oh, great. So great. if you're, it's uh, it's almost, it looks like it's inside that mm -hmm. you drove into a garage with like a, like a, a, a booth in the middle of it. Well, that's interesting. It is very interesting. Very cool. They yes. thought of everything back they then. They did think of everything back then. <laughs> Uh, but now I don't even. I, how, do you go to the ATM anymore? Do you do well? Well, let me ask you this: You probably go to the ATM. Do you go to the drive-through and actually interact with the banker on the other side, with, like the Not little really. window? I gotta say, the I little mean, suction thing that goes up and down. They no, put the thing in there. I just go. I go to an ATM yeah, and that's too. it. Me <laughs> too. The last time I did that was during COVID because oh, that was the yeah, only way yeah. you could bank. That's true. Right? Yeah. No, I haven't done that in quite a long time. I All right. Say. Well, it happened back in 1946, folks. <laughs> All right. So then November 12th, 1954, Ellis Island closes. Um, that had been around, I believe, since 1892, 93. Mm -hmm. um, millions of people came over from all over to, uh, you know, find the American dream here. And uh, I know yeah. my ancestors came and I'm have sure you been? Have you been? Did you do the tour? I never have been there. No, I haven't. Been. That and the Statue of Liberty. You think living? I've done the Statue of Liberty. Oh, you have. I yes, I enjoyed that very much. But it's kind of weird. You live 
in New York, and it's like, how how have you not been there? But yeah, it's, well, uh... you know, it's like it's a tourist thing. You know, you don't necessarily want to do tourist things when you're when True. you're a resident, right? True. Because all the tourists are there. That's correct, right? You know, so I must get there. <laughs> you must get there. And and did you know this, Jimmy? Uh, again, bonus feature, bonus facts. Since we're like expanding the show, we're yeah, trying to sure. Make, um, did you know that it was used for pirate hangings in the early 1800s? Wow, I did not know that. I did not know that either. Interesting. And, you know, I mean, you could see Jack Sparrow. Uh, <laughs> You know, and it uh, it wasn't the first place immigrants landed when they arrived in New York. It was just the official entry point uh-huh. uh, during the the detour from the island because it was it was uh, too um, shallow the water there. Oh, uh, okay. Um, then you would go to first you would go to the I guess the port of New York, and then you would be brought to Ellis Island for further inspection. Does it mention anything about um, Crystal Garden? No, what is Crystal Garden? Crystal, I isn't think... that the great? Isn't that the great buffet uh, over in Ireland? No, <laughs> I believe Crystal Garden <laughs> <laughs> was the um, kind of like before Ellis Island, oh, okay. where immigrants would come in and get processed, and uh, it was actually featured, I believe, in uh, an American Tale, a lovely film from my childhood. Oh, American so. Tale! How often does this movie come up in the office, folks? Uh, many times. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of my favorite movies from when I was a kid. <laughs> I will not sing we not the song. Sing no, that, I will not do that the, for for the public. There here. are no cats in America. <laughs> no cats in America. Just mention that for you right here. Okay, what else we got? Jimmy? All right, so we got November thirteenth, nineteen forty-five. General Charles de Gaulle was appointed president of the French Provisional Government. Yes, made so president, and eventually made it uh, a international airport. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Charles de Gaulle Airport. Oh, that's right. Right? In yeah. Paris, yeah. That is very true. <laughs> that's the only thing, unfortunately, that I know about Charles That's all I know about him, too. <laughs> um, this one I found very interesting. Uh, November 13th, 1971. And this is in the middle of still the Apollo program mm-hmm. where we're going to the moon. And um, I, I didn't realize this. Uh, the it, Mariner 9 reaches Mars. So in 1971, we sent a spaceship of some sorts or whatever you know yes, it was a, and it, it was a spaceship yeah and it, beat, it went into space and it beat the soviet mars 2 which had an 11 day head start to mars becoming the first spacecraft to orbit another planet you know why they 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 used diesel they used <laughs> it was you know we, we, used, we they did the, the russians we used, used, we used un, unleaded we, 90, that's why we, we got there faster we got there faster no i'm just kidding no, <laughs> and the orbiter mapped 85% of the Martian surface and sent back more than 7,000 pictures, including images of Olympus Mons. I'm not yeah, sure if I'm yes. saying this right. Vals, Vals Marineris. Yeah, there you go. Maybe. Yep. And um, Phobos and Deimos, which I th- think might be moons of... I think they are moons. I think yeah. they're moons of Mars, yeah. Uh, and it was the one of the most... Uh, successful early robotic missions of the space age. That is something when you think about it. I yeah. mean, you know, here we went to the moon, and now we're se- then we're sending things to Mars. I mean, that that must have been amazing. And we haven't done it since. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we have we're what we have perseverance and uh, we had the rovers. Curiosity, we yeah. The so rovers now we got the there. rovers going. We, but we had, and we also had the the little helicopter that they flew yeah. around for a while. I think it's still going. It's still going. Yeah. It is still going. Every now and then on on NASA's Instagram, I see a uh, yeah. I see oh, it's twenty seventh flight or something. Yeah, and, you know? and not only that, but they've also recorded audio. Ah. from mars it's interesting to, yes. like to hear from another world like that exactly not much to hear though so, <laughs> there's not much lot, going on there's not much going on a lot of wind yeah what all right out here jimmy november 14th 1994 the first paying passengers traveled on the new rail service through the channel tunnel linking england and france so this that, is this is amazing would that be about. the channel from it what? would be it would be the channel <laughs> it is the channel jimmy <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, what's amazing about this is that it has the longest undersea portion of any tunnel in the world. Wow. 23 and a half miles. Can you, be ima- can you imagine wow. being under the water or actually underground? Because I'm sure this, there's a, a little entryway and a, and a post exit there uh, for 23 and a half miles. I can't even fathom. I can't. So think about like your folks, if you're listening or watching, think about your commute, okay? Mm-hmm. The average commute on Long Island is probably a half hour. It's probably around 20 miles. Imagine spending your entire commute in a tunnel. 
That is the channel tunnel. <laughs> and we think going in the Lincoln tunnel and stuff is a lot. Again with Lincoln with this guy. <laughs> But it's it's crazy though when no, you think is, of yeah. 23, 23 miles. miles yeah. That's that's wild. And they have they have trains where you can bring your car on board, Ooh. and they'll take you across. Uh, obviously, there's the high speed rail, uh, but I want to do that someday. That's like my one of my bucket yeah. list items. Go for is it. To, is to go from, from England to uh, to France. Nice. You know, nice. from London to Paris. To go through the channel. Yeah. Can you? It's hard for us to understand because I mean maybe if you're um, if you go to Canada for example, mm -hmm. you take the train up to Canada. You know, you have that experience of going from one country to another. Mm -hmm. But over in Europe, that's almost every train yeah. does that almost. It goes from one country to another. Yeah. It's, it's just, a, it's fantastic. And in this case, uh, you're under the water. You're under the English Channel. And they don't have to use a plane. They just take the train everywhere. Exactly. It's more- uh, Save money. <laughs> save money, saves the environment, more fuel efficient. Exactly. Sure, it's it. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what else do we got here? All right. Uh, November 15th, 1889, Brazil became a republic. Brazil became a republic, and did you know that Brazil was the last country in the Americas to abolish slavery wow, in 1888? I did, I did not know that. Uh, as soccer is by far the most popular sport in Brazil, and the men's national team has won a record of five world championships. Wow. Is yes. that World Cups or just... Uh, world Cup, yes. World Cups, world Cups okay. yeah. And uh, this is interesting. Brazil's border touches all countries on the South American continent except Chile and Ecuador. It's a very big country. Wait, say that one more time. It touches all countries because Brazil is like huge. It yeah. like, you know, has its hands in everything. It's yeah, touching yeah. everything. Uh, it touches all countries on the South American continent except wow. Chile and Ecuador. That's that's so, so. pretty crazy when you think about yeah. it. Cause... And this is something, just a little bonus that I don't even have uh, printed here as it does. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the if you were to travel from the southernmost point to the topmost point of Brazil, it's actually uh, longer than if you were to travel from the topmost point of Brazil to Canada. Wow. <laughs> is that right? That is right. Yes. Look it up, folks. Look it up. Wow. <laughs> it is great. Seems like it would be yes. longer to go to Canada. I yeah. don't know why. <laughs> so it became a republic in 18... 1889. 89. Fantastic. All right. November 16th, 1933. President Franklin D. Roosevelt announced the U.S. and Soviet Russia had resumed diplomatic relations suspended since 1919. Oh, there you go. And uh, I'm pretty sure the Soviet Union was aligned with Germany at first and Might Italy been, yep. in, the, in World War II, so that didn't last long. No, it didn't. But then they came back to the Allies. Yes. Which is interesting. It so. is interesting. Um, and now we don't know. Now we don't know what's going now, on. Now we don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, November 17th. 1558, Queen Elizabeth I ascended the throne of England at the age of 25, reigning until 1603 when she was 69 years old. Uh, under her leadership, England became a world power, defeating the Spanish Armada, and witnessed a golden age of literature featuring, featuring works by William Shakespeare, Edmund Spencer, and others. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the golden age of literature. Can you imagine... Uh, being William Shakespeare and and performing for Queen Elizabeth I, you don't realize how far how long ago it was the 1500s. Yeah, and how that bloodline is still going. It's it's, it's just, unbelievable. It is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I just I went to uh, Jimmy. Did I tell you I went to England this summer for is that for right? a tiny little bit. A little and it was time. good. It was good to be back. <laughs> You've be been back there before. I have been there many times, and uh, I enjoyed it very, very much. Nice. I should go back more often. World they have some really here. great. Uh, potato chips, or as they call them over there, crisps. Ah, crisps. <laughs> Walker's, Walker's crisps. Walker's, is that yes, the brand? It's a brand, yeah. Oh, very, very nice, good. very nice. Yeah, I don't know how, what that has to do with uh, Queen Elizabeth I, but, uh, uh, well, it does, it does, because uh, England is great, and their crisps are great. <laughs> try the crisps. <laughs> great, try the crisps. <laughs> All this right. next one, Jimmy, I love, I love yeah. this next one. <laughs> let's do it, let's do it. All right, so November 17th, 1734, New York Weekly Journal publisher John Peter Zenger was arrested and charged with libeling the colonial governor of New York. In his trial, held in August of 1735, truth was successfully used as a, as a defense <laughs> against libel, an important step toward freedom of speech. Uh, I'm sorry, toward freedom, freedom of, the of the press in America. So truth, folks. Truth. Truth. In his trial, truth actual truth was successfully used as a defense it's great like <laughs> it, it, you can't even imagine like 
then you would just right. because you said something exactly. that you'd be arrested right. for. It's it's insane. And now think about this. This is 1734. We're in 2023. Yep. How much has gone on in the last few years about the press, about truth, about mm-hmm. fake news, about yep. all this kind of stuff? Yep. And it all started back then uh, in 1773. John Peter Zanger. This week in 1773. <laughs> we'll build a DeLorean and go we'll back. Just, and, we'll go yeah. back. We'll check it out. Yes. <laughs> all right. So November 17th, 1800, the U.S. Congress met for the first time in the new capital at Washington, D.C., President John Adams then became the first occupant of the executive mansion, Very nice. later renamed the White House. There you go. And um, do, we, do you know where the, where the first capital was and where the second capital was? Okay. Let's, I'm going to guess. Mm-hmm. Um, it was New York the first capital? Correct. Yep. Yeah, That's it. where Washington was inaugurated. Yes. All right. And is Philadelphia the second capital? You are correct, oh, sir. All that? right. See, See that? That's because I go to the Broadway show. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, you learn something though. You learn something. You learn something, Lynn Manuel M- Miranda. Thank exactly. You. He teaches. He teaches. <laughs> he teaches through music <laughs> and rap. Um, November eighteenth, fourteen seventy seven. This fourteen seventy seven. See, now we're going really far. Yeah, back. we're really going back. All right. William Caxton printed the first book in the English language. Now okay. I don't know how to say that. I'm going to try saying this. Can all right. I try saying Please, this to me? Okay. by all means. Um, I'm going to think. I- I'm guessing it's the dictus and saying just. Of philosophers. Mm-hmm. That sounded so right. Kind of, yes. Yeah, so it's kind of like uh, the words and sayings of the philosophers. I like right? that. Yes. We'll the go with that. And saying just of the philosophers. That sounds right. Spelled to me. completely wrong. Yes. I'll put it on the screen here for people. You'll understand why I had a, tr- a tough yes. time saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, November 18th, 1916, during World War I, Allied General Douglas Haig called off the first Battle of the Somme. I think that's how you say yeah. it. The Somme. Well, we're After so, yeah. five months, the Allies had advanced 125 square miles at a cost, and this is staggering. That's crazy. 420,000 British. And 195,000 French soldiers. German losses were over 650,000 men. That's it's crazy when you think, like how much, I how think, many people were killed in those yeah, wars. Yeah, and 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 you know, obviously there's there's a number, unfortunately, a number of wars going on right now. But this this number here is is staggering. Yeah. Um, and I hope we never get to that point. Let's ever hope again. that never happens again. That, you know, I mean, it's terrible just to look at those numbers. It is. Like, what are we doing? And finally, Jimmy. Finally. Now, technically, this wasn't really part of this week. Well, we, we always include it, though. That's what I we do. I have to include it. We do include if I, it. If I don't, I feel like I'm doing something exactly. wrong. Exactly. All right. Especially with the, <clears throat> with the outfit you're wearing today. Yes. It's very appropriate. Yes. Uh, so November 19th, 1863. I think da, you know da, where da, I'm da, going da, with this. 160 years ago. 160 years ago, President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address during ceremonies dedicating 17 acres of the Gettysburg battlefield as a national cemetery. Famed orator Edward Everett of Massachusetts preceded Lincoln and spoke for two hours. Can you imagine listening to that for two hours? Listen to that guy. What's he got to say? Well, (laughs) when after the fact that I think he wrote Lincoln the next day, he said, I should be glad that I should that I could flatter myself that I came as near to the central idea of the occasion in two hours as you did in two, two minutes. minutes. So yeah. quite the uh, just, you know yeah. compliment there. And um, although many in attendance were at first unimpressed, Lincoln's words have come to symbolize the definition of democracy itself. Indeed, yeah. It and, was, uh, um, uh, and uh, there are uh, some photos out there. There's some representations yep. of that of that time. Uh, but uh, yeah, pretty remarkable. Yeah, that uh, that you're dressed here as Mr. Lincoln <laughs> yourself. And again, if you're not watching, you're missing out. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and and again, if you if you didn't come yesterday, uh, I think we're going to put that online. We're yes. Put your your pre- what you did yesterday. Right. We're going to put right. online. So definitely be able to see it as well. Well, once again, Jimmy. We did it. We did, we did it. Another this, this week, week in, in history. history. And uh, and not only that, we did it for you uh, here on YouTube if you're watching uh, and uh, and if you're listening, uh, thank you so much for listening once again. Absolutely. And Jimmy, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming down. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And that does it for this episode. If you want to listen to older episodes or read our show notes, visit our website mcplpodcast.com. You know these videos now are going up every week. <laughs> That's right. So uh, click the like button and click subscribe. Mm-hmm. So. 
this way uh, you know when we have our next and click notifications, of course. Of course. You click notifications, you'll know when our, our next show You won't goes miss up. anything. You won't miss any of the wonderful <laughs> things that we are doing here at Middle Country Public Library. And of course, if you want, comment below, right? Absolutely. Comment we want to hear list. what you think. Exactly. Absolutely. That would be very nice. <laughs> so for uh, Abraham Lincoln, or should I say Abraham Lincoln, the way this guy looks over here with the beard and whatnot. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> uh, for Jim Ward, I'm Sal DiVincenzo. We'll see you on the next show. Take care, everyone.